Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. I have been solving math problems out of this book here, practicing to take the GRE, general test, 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 241, quantitative comparison question number 7. Let's take a look at it. They give you a picture which I have drawn already here. Uh, you have to have the book in front of you, otherwise uh, you will have difficulty following it. Here is the picture and we are told that the point S, this S here, is the midpoint of P to R. If S is the midpoint of P to R, that implies that P to S has to equal to S to R, which is what I have written here. So now what we are dealing with is the situations where we have two triangles. In triangle in triangle PQS versus triangle QSR, we are dealing with two triangles here, and the situation that we have is that P to S equals S to R, as, as it is right here, because S is the midpoint. We also know that Q to S they share this side. This side is shared by the two triangle. So therefore, if you have a, excuse me, if you have two triangles where two sides of one triangle are equal to the two sides of the other triangle, then the third side must also be equal. If you think about it, it makes sense. If I draw a triangle here, and if I tell you that this length is the same as this length, and I also tell you that this length is the same as this length, then naturally this length would have to be the same as this length, because otherwise it will not join, it will not finish the triangle. So if I tell you that this is equal to this, if I tell you that this is equal to this, then it must imply that the third side has also has to be equal, otherwise the triangle will not close, it will not complete. So the third side must also equal. That also, that tells me, that tells me that the side QP is equal to side QR. I'm probably making it, not probably, as a matter of fact, I am making it much more difficult than it needs to be. For those, of, for those people who understand and see it right away, they can immediately see that the length of Q to, Q to T is less than the length QR, because Q to T is this, Q to T is going to be less than Q to S, because the triangle, this triangle here, is smaller than this triangle up here. And therefore, this distance, T to S, let me erase this here, so what we conclude from here is that the two triangles are exactly the same. The triangle PQS and the triangle QSR are exactly the same. So here we can see that since this is a small triangle, it faces the smaller size T to S, and since this is a large triangle, it faces the larger side P to S. P to S is much bigger than T to S, but P to S, we already know, is same as S to R. What is the question actually asking? I forget. Rather, they're talking about Q to T. Sorry, let me forget about that. As you can see, length Q to T is smaller, it's going to be shorter than the length Q to P because it's it's more much more in towards the perpendicular. So the more you swing out, the longer the side is going to be. So Q to T, let me put it here, Q Q to T is smaller than Q to P, which also implies that Q to T is smaller than Q to R, because QP and QR are equal, as right here, as we already showed here, because, again, one more time, they share one side and this side is equal to that side, that means two of the sides of the two triangles are equal to each other, therefore the third side, PQ, has to be same as QR. And hence, if Q to T, if you can see that Q to T, if you can see that Q to T is less than Q to P, then Q to T also has to be less than Q to R because Q P and Q R are equal. That's all. The answer is B. As I said, sometimes if the problem is too simple, and yet you can't just stand here and draw the picture and say the answer is B, you have to say something. And as you try to explain something that is 
that is too straightforward, most of the time you end up making it too complicated in the explanation. This wasn't such a bad problem. 76% of the people who took the exam got it right. Three quarter of them got it right. Uh, one quarter of the people had trouble. And the reason probably why they had the trouble is because they were probably sitting there trying to figure out, trying to figure out the exact length of the QT and the exact length of the QR. If you sit there and calculate everything, these problems cannot be done. These problems, that's why I make a point here. These are not quantitative co computation. They're not asking you to compute the length. They're asking you to compare the lengths. That's all it is. So I don't actually need to know what Q to T is, and I do not need to know what Q to R is exactly. I do not need to know that. All we, all, all we, are able, all we have to tell is whether or not they're equal or one is less than the other. That's all. And here we found that Q T is less than the QR, except in the exam, they have the switched, uh, the answer is B. This is column B and this is column A. That's all. I hope uh, you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring or if you wish to hire my services for, for tutoring over the internet, uh, through, through, through the webcam and escape and all that, or if you just simply wish to purchase the solution manuals for any of these problems, uh, get, go to my website at www.prep, P-R-E-P prep, F-O-R-4, -E -E, gre.com and send me an email. All right. Thanks.